EBITDA in itself means nothing. That's not how much cash you have. You, you have maintenance capex. Mr. Market does crazy things sometimes, and that's great in, in the short term. And what I told you in the long term is Mr. Market gets it right. If there's a big enough discount, I'm going to assume that over the next two or three years, I'm going to get my money. And if you just keep thinking that way, it, it, forget about anything else. It becomes a very simple process. You shameless cloner, want to track portfolios of famous value investors like Warren Buffett? See their buys and sells, current and historical holdings? Just visit valueinvesting.guru. It is valueinvesting.guru. Link in the description. All right, so we covered that. I uh, wanted to make sure, we, I mentioned once again that you can't look at EBITDA without looking at maintenance capex. Uh, if you want to do, use EBITDA like uh, Charlie did uh, for comparables, uh, that's fine if it's only one metric and there's a good explanation for why you're doing that because the capex is unclear and everything else. It's just one more metric you could use, but only in a comparable sense, not an evaluation sense because EBITDA in itself means nothing. That's not how much cash you have. You, you have maintenance capex. Um, all right, uh, we talked about uh, previously Mr. Market, and Buffett's great example was the Washington Post story that he writes about where he said, gee, you know, at the time I bought the Washington Post for $100 a share, uh, if you'd asked any analyst on the street, you know, what would it be sold for? If it was sold today, they all came out with four and $500, okay? Yet they weren't recommending it because, you know, it didn't look good for the quarter. So. Um, I think Mr. Market does crazy things sometimes, and that's great in, in the short term. And what I told you in the long term is Mr. Market gets it right. Okay, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, you know, who can name some reasons why Mr. Market gets it right over the long term? Short term, we read the paper, right? We saw stocks bounce around tons. Yet, I'm um, so Mr. Market's crazy. Then how does he get sane over the long term? I think that's the big, mm -hmm. right. I think that's the big picture answer. There, there may be uncertainty right now, and fear or whatever there might be in the stock price. But over time, let's the, whatever those fears or issues were resolve themselves. Now, those it may take two or three years for those things to resolve themselves, but eventually they do, right? And then smart people, if it's still trading at a bargain, will buy it. People who are doing the analysis will buy it when the uncertainty is done. And that could take two or three years. It could happen in six months. Could could happen in a week. Could happen. Generally, it happens within two to three years. Almost always within two to three years, that happens. Uh, another thing that could happen is uh, company sees their stocks cheap. They might buy it back. They may they may buy it back when it's overpriced. But if a company sees a stock is really cheap, they may view that as a good investment. That's another way that stock prices get pushed up to fair value. Another way would be what. Takeover or threat of takeover, right? You don't even really have to have a takeover. Just, you know, if you buy all the shares up, that's all you own the company. So the, the fact that that can happen at some time, if there's not too many takeover barriers, means that the market, sh uh, eventually the stock will start trading towards what it's worth. Otherwise, someone's going to come in and do it for you, either a big company. So that's how Mr. Market gets rational over a period of time. And even statistically, if I look at it, it generally, on average, happens even in a year period. Uh, but almost always it happens within two to three years. Not always, but almost always it happens within two to three years. And that's such a powerful concept. It's like, forget the market, OK? I want to do my analysis. If there's a big enough discount, I'm going to assume that over the next two or three years, I'm going to get my money. And if you just keep thinking that way, it, it, forget about anything else. It becomes a very simple process. It becomes a process of how good a valuation can I do? And if the stock's at 10 and you think the valuation range is 15 to 20, that may be close enough, depending on wh where you th when you think it's going to be there. But even over two to three years, that's still a pretty good rate of return. So you might not have to pinpoint exactly what it's worth. But if you think 15 to 20, it's at 10, that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the investments we had a number of years ago was uh, Foot Locker, uh, a simple investment. Um, and there, it was a very simple story. Stock was trading at 10 times earnings. Uh, stock was earning a dollar, and uh, it was trading at 10. Uh, it hadn't grown in a bunch of years. They thought they had, you know, opened up enough stores, and 
I guess that's why I was trading at 10. There was a bunch of cheap stuff out there. But we just did a little work. And they had a uh, chain, I think it was Champs, was one of their chains, uh, sporting goods. And basically it sold sneakers, but it was a big box store. They were losing a shirt in a, a number of these big box stores. Um, and, and frankly, when you added it all up, they were losing 50 cents a share in these big boxes. And their regular little sneaker stores did very well. That was where all the money was being made. So really, they were earning $1.50. You're getting the idea, right? They were earning $1.50 in the, sh the sneaker store, losing 50 cents in these big box stores. And over the next three years, all these money-losing stores were coming off lease. You know, one-third, one-third, one-third. So what you really had was $1.50 earnings to $10 stock. We came up with a valuation of somewhere between 17 and 20. And at $10, it was kind of a no-brainer. Um, and so, you know, that's, we didn't have to pinpoint the valuation or, or even know whether it was worth 22 or not. We had plenty of margin of safety uh, to find that. And um, we didn't even have to predict the future that well. We could just assume, hey, you know, it's, the business stays flat, which we think it's growing, but let's say, assume it's flat, and we have this free money coming to us. So that's a good example of a good investment. Um, you shameless cloner, want to track portfolios of famous value investors like Warren Buffett? See their buys and sells, current and historical holdings? Just visit valueinvesting.guru. It is valueinvesting.guru. Link in the description.